Hey, it's John Good. I'm here with my friends from Beat It, and we're going to have a nice tour of DW. It's so great to have you here on my turf. Last time I was in Europe speaking with you, so we're going to go on a tour of the factory, and you're going to see some of the wonderful sights and the people who make all the DW things happen. Unfortunately, you can't smell the smells, but just imagine the wood, okay? So we're going to journey right out this special door right here and this is my secret door how I get to the factory so come on with me and we'll take off getting into the cool part you know the office work the management and doing all those things that's one thing but man being out in the factory with the shells and all of the people that's the cool part Many things you will see are all kinds of different woods. You know, this is where we line up some shells that they have to sit while they're getting ready to go into production after they've been made. And along the, this journey, you will see all kinds of different cool woods. Here's one that I'm really excited about. It's called European Spalted Beach. So... That's a, that's a new one that's pretty interesting. And it's made by a guy named Sean Smith. He, he is a, he's a man who's my right-hand man who runs the shell shop. You know, I just came back from Australia and I had an amazing trip finding Tasmanian Blackheart Sassafras with black wood as the inside part of the shell and here it is right here so they're already in production and we've done our work to get the veneer and the timber here so it's an exciting time those drums will kill you in a good way a very very different sounding drums in this journey you're gonna see a lot of very important people to me these people who have been with us on an average of 10 years, we have about 175 employees here, so I'm very proud of that part of it all. All the folks that you see are really into their jobs. They love what they do. Or so they tell me, but the way you know that they love what they do is the way the instrument turns out. To me, that's how you can really tell. And this is where the engine of the drum shop really is. If you look up here, all of those racks, Jan, if you can kind of do that sort of thing, those are all different exotic woods from all over the world, places that I go to find it, it's a really rough job going to these places. No, it's, it's a fun job. And if it wasn't fun, we wouldn't be doing all these cool things. So, let's go into the shell shop. This is Baruch and Rob. They are putting the woods together. For example, Rob clips all the veneers right here. Baruch does a lot of the artwork and the... Um, the fitting of veneers together, which is very tricky in a lot of ways. Sometimes when you see a really cool looking exotic wood kit, it was most likely put together by Baruch. And so we start off by clipping the, the wood. Now he's, Rob is clipping some maple right now. Now we have so much maple that we buy every month. In, uh, in meters, which you would understand more than feet, it adds up to about 40,000 square meters of maple a month. And now, here's something you can tell by how maple works. Vertical maple is right here, but this is summer maple. We call it summer maple. In the summertime, sugar runs up a maple tree to make the leaves nice and green. But what it does is it leaves behind all these weird lines. That's what we use for the inside core of the drum shell. In the winter time, the sugar runs out of the tree 
the leaves turn colors and fall, and what's left behind is pristine grain patterns like this. That is winter maple. We put that on the outside of the shell. So there's two basic types of maple that we're using in those drum shells. Then of course we, we do cherry, we do birch, we do oak, we do gum, we use all kinds of poplar and the list goes on and on. There's some purple heart right here waiting to become a drum. Now before you can make a drum shell, of course, you have to make plywood. So here we're making plywood and putting it into a press. So Zig has made some Purple Heart plywood and that's at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's mildly hot and when he puts it, you know, like the short grain and the long grain together with the glue, then what we do is we press that, that, that heated press to 3,100 pounds. And um, I guess you could look it up, Martin, right? And when we press that, we press it for three minutes and out comes plywood. So plywood is very important. You know, if you start off with bad plywood, you're going to have a bad shell. I just got very Italian right there. Here we are with one of my favorite guys, Abel. Abel, Abel puts the reinforcing hoops in drums that need a reinforcing hoop. And if you'll notice here, Jan, it's a finger joint at a 45 degree angle. Okay? Now, Abel has sized this. He's going to run that through the glue spreader. Getting glue on one side. Now he will put it on to the top and bottom of the shell. He snaps it in place. He'll take a, a tool and tap it in there. So when he gets that, we're going to finish this off by taking it back into the press, press it out, and um, heat it up, and it becomes part of the shell. By the way, Abel's the fastest hoop guy in the West. Once you've made the plywood, you've got to cut it to length. We've already cut it to width. You have to cut it to length. When you cut it to length, that's a very critical time. Excuse me. So here's a machine that cuts on demand to the length that you want, just like that. But when you cut it to length, you have to use it right away. If you look up here, we have water misting on us all over this room. You can see it over there. It's a losing battle. This is Southern California. Like today is so dry, but we try. The best environment to, to make a drum shell in would be super wet place. That's not here. So we, when you cut the material to length, it wants to shrink right away. So that's why we cut it and we use it right away. So this is Jose. Hello, guys. Jose, my friends from Beat It. And if you come right over here, you can see kind of what what Jose is going to tell us. So okay, let's turn around. What are you making, Jose? 12-inch Purple Heart, 9-ply. 12-inch Purple Heart, 9-ply. All right, so, so we started off with a 3-ply for the outer. Long grain, uh, vertical grain, long grain in between, vertical on the back end. First thing I do is dab a bit of glue on both ends, so when it comes together, we get a solid seam. I bring it over, run it across both sides, and lay it flat on this table. Next, we'll take a three ply. This here is going to be the core of the shell. Vertical grain, long grain in between, vertical grain on the back side as well. Our purple heart. It goes in on that side of the machine, comes out on this end, and we get an even spread of glue on both sides of this piece. So you look at it on this side, look at it on the back side, and it's even on both ends. 
We lay it on top of it and we stagger it out so when it all comes together, it's spread equally, it makes for a stronger shell when done. And then we finish it off with another three ply, which will be the same vertical, long, and vertical. And you finish up vertical, right? Yes. Stagger it out. It's all spread equally. Then it all comes together. We get the inner to match up the core and the outer. It all comes together and it starts looking more like a 12 inch drum now. From here it goes over to the hot press. I'm gonna walk between you guys here and bring it over to my hot mold. Sounds great, pal, thanks. So it comes right into this hot press here. Goes down all the way, make sure everything's down evenly. I'll close the outside of the press. Bring down the inside. Lock my machine and set my timer. The press here will give it 2,600 pounds of pressure per square inch. It's heated a little under 200 degrees and it'll cook in here for seven and a half to eight minutes. When the shell comes out of the hot press, it'll be a hot steaming shell. At this point, I'll take it out of the hot, bring it over to the cold press. That cold press will give it the same 2,600 pounds. It cools the shell down, catalyzes the glue inside. So by the time it's out, it's a solid round shell ready to get cut down and handed over to our next department. This process was developed here in DW. We're actually the only company that does it. We have a pan on it and we do this for uh, every size from a six to a 24, including our 23 inch shell. And that's the way our DW shells are made. So it's, it's all hot and cold. Hot and cold for every single Beautiful. Time. Did you happen to have two coming out anywhere? Yes, I do. I, they're actually 10 inch shells. So okay, let's go back over here. You can see there's a lot of machinery in here. Take it out of here, cold shell. You can hit it, there's already a timber in here. All we do now is cut it down to size, get it sanded, hand it over for production, over to John Good who picked this. This is a hot shell. What's that on the outside? This is an outer, it protects the shell from the outside to avoid any pinches on the shell because it's so small in there. And if you see it, it's got nothing on here. And if you feel it, it's a hot steamy shell right now. You squeeze it, there's still a lot of movement to it. So it goes from this hot into this cold. So that's from the hot, that's now in the cold. Now we'll close the outside, and down the inside, and let it sit in here for another seven and a half, eight minutes. When it's out, it'll be a cold round shell. Ready to get cut down and hand it over. There's an awful lot of shells in here. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, a lot of machinery. You should see my electric bill. Oy. This department is what we call prep. And prep means we're preparing the shells by sanding them and uh, cutting them to size. Now it's really important when you start with a shell to have it cut parallel. So that's what we do here. You can see through the glass. Once that's cut like that, you wind up with a lot of pieces like this. If you guys can tell me what I can make out of these, please do, because these all get thrown away. It's, it makes me sad in a way. So from that step, thank you. We're going to sand the inside. Here we're sanding the inside of this shell. And from sanding the inside, we also then sand the outside. This is the first step of sanding. We have many more sanding steps, but this is how this one goes. So that's just taking the glue off the outside of the shell. So from there, once that's sanded, 
then a lot of the other finesse sanding will happen with these gentlemen all throughout here. This is my, uh, my edge man, Jose. Now he will cut and grind the shell to make sure the bearing edge it sits very flat on this surface. As you can see, everything gets checked on granite. So that's, he's very good at what he does and he'll grind it, cut it, and check it about five times per shell to make sure it's very flat. So starting here, this is gonna get ground a little more. But that's what he's doing. The shell gets cut and checked about in three places in the factory. So what this will do is simultaneously cut the one side and the other side, 180 degrees apart. This is a pretty pretty good edge on the top, right? No light. And here's what we just did. Very important step. Thank you, Mike. The next thing is we're working with a lot of CNC's. We're going to walk right down here and see Frankie. Frankie, you got us going. This is kind of a private machine, so just just watch the shell being drilled. And uh, it's all on barcodes, so when we scan the paperwork, the the machine knows everything that this drum needs. Tighten up the shell. Next thing he will do is take this scanner right here and hit the paperwork. Everything works off of a barcode. And that's really important for us because when you're looking for where a drum is in the system, you can find it that way. So this is going to hold the shell down and check its size so it's verified that that's the shell. And we're going to drill four holes, which are the most important holes, the DW badge holes first. So it's drilling the holes, and then it'll have to change tools and go to the ones that are going to be for the lugs. So it'll drill all those holes in short order. Voila, it's very accurate. It's as accurate as aircraft tolerances can be. The you, you, only drum that we put lacquer on the inside is a snare drum. Because why? When you play a snare drum, you want it to be bright. And so um, when you lacquer the inside, it's the only drum. Floor toms, tom toms, bass drums, no. We oil seal them. With snare drums, you want to have that slick lacquer finish. But when you put them on a shelf, the lacquer has a tendency to run. And we're always sanding it. So, about five years ago, I was buying a hot dog on the Santa Monica Pier. And the little hot dogs were churning and cooking. And I thought to myself, that could work for our drum shells. So, if you can see through here back there, get up close that way, you can see my hot dog roller rolling the shells and the lacquer is drying while it can't run anywhere. So that's my hot dog roller. So this is where we put the lacquer, I mean the sealer on first. And this is the other booths where we have Louis Garcia. So come on in. So here's what we do where the graphics department is. Hey Louis, could you come say hi to my friends? This is Louis Garcia, this is Jan and Martin from Beat It in Poland, all the way from Poland. Why don't you say hi? Thank you very much. How are you? This is where all the magic happens. Uh, no, this is our, our uh, custom 
uh, paint department right here. This is where we do all our airbrushing and custom graphics, uh, things of that sort, whatever the customer would like, uh, whatever is needed, whatever they'd like to have. Um, we got our spray booth where all the all our candies and flakes and pearls. Uh, this side is all the oil, satin oil department. It's not oil, but we just call it that because that's what the industry kind of calls it. So, uh, but uh, yeah, this is what we do. We got our little home away from home here. This is how we ask if we can come in right here. This is where we put the clear on. And this is Ricky right here. He sprays the clear lacquers on top of paint jobs and this is Beto and he's putting the paint job on. How's it going? Great, great. These guys do amazing work here. If you turn around Jan and look at this. This of course has just been painted. The next step will be Ricky will put the clear on seen a lot of our drums this is where the paint jobs are born so then I want to show you how we analyze the sound thank you Jared. so um, let me show you this real quick So I, I would call that F sharp. And every drum gets checked here. It's a, it's a very lengthy process to make sure. We're only humans, but we try our best to make sure every drum is checked, checked, triple checked. Best at quality control. They know every little thing to look for before it goes to final assembly. So here, is a tough place for every drum to get past. Dahlia won't let anything go. It's not just right. Um, we're assembling some nickel, black nickel over brass right now. There's two final assembly lines over here. Everybody's working hard. Today happens to be the last day of the month. So we're really pushing, pushing. And once everything gets put together by all these wonderful people over here, these men and women, and they make sure everything is DW specifications. The last bit is to have Bobby. Bobby tunes the drum. He makes sure it sounds the way we wanted it to sound. So once he tunes the drum, <clears throat> then we have one one last stop for quality checking. Thank you, Bobby. Mm -hmm. This is called the White House. You know, and Maria today is, is she is president of the White House. <laughs> and so what she does is she makes sure everything looks right, it's the right color, there is a burst involved, that matches. And once she says it's okay, she photographs every kit right there. And that goes into the DW archives. And when she says it's ready to go, then we set it over here. With Johnny and Armando, and they put it in boxes. It goes all over the world. Hopefully some of them go to Poland. It's up there. That's where we stock all our shells. And when I tamper match them, we must make sure that the colors are the same because maple changes color slightly. So if Louie's putting a clear finish on, you want to make sure the color tone is right. The timbre and the intervallic relationship, doom, 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 doom. Make sure that's nice and even. And then the last thing is also the grain of the wood. If it's a see-through color, you want to make sure it looks like a drum set and not just components that are stuck together. So that's where all that kind of thing happens. And look at these exotics waiting to, to go to their future homes. 
Here you have all kinds of wood. This is ivory ebony. This is mapa burl. And the bottom is bird's eye maple. We have African chen chen over there. There's about 40 different exotics here. You see automatic screw machines. These are from 1926. One day I had a father and a son who had to be maybe, what, 12 years old? And he said, oh, Mr. Good, did you buy him new? Mm -hmm. I want to send him to the moon. <laughs> but anyway, that's, these make the shafts, they make the uh, universal joints, the cam followers for floating spring assemblies, etc., etc. All these machines just keep going. They're such wonderful machines. This is the final assembly for pedals. Here's a pedal testing machine. You know, we put them on there and look them bang, 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 bang for hours and days to see if the spring breaks or if the hinge will hold up. And we constantly have to keep checking. This pedal right here, the, the MDD, and this over here is the MCD. You're looking at all the stuff that's made in that room right there. So it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of like the end result of all that hard work. We've got stands that are being built here. You know, I'm guilty of, of making very heavy snare drums. If you look at this stand right here, if you turn this screw, you can make, make it go up by itself. That takes the weight off of a very heavy snare drum. We also do that in tom stands because you don't want it to turn the wrong screw and have it land on the bass drum that Uncle John Good went to the moon to go get that wood, right? He put a big chip in it and it's terrible. Juanita's working on all of this tedious stuff. Those are cajon pedals she's working on right now. I mean, this is the hardware screw right here, putting it all together. And once we get through this part of it, this is, this is the man. We do a lot of R&D right here, right? I'll try to. Yeah, he does amazing work. If it can be held up and make a sound, this guy probably invented it. <laughs> so here's his work area where he puts so many of these wonderful bongos, congas, <coughs> conga stands, bongo stands, you know, um, you know, cajones. My God, there's so many different cajones. And he's worked on just about all of them. But this is his R&D shop right here. And so some of it, when he gets it, when he makes sure that it's really right, then we send it to where we have some of these things manufactured in mass quantities. So this is where it all starts. So this is a fun place to work. There's a lot of magical things that happen here. It's so good to be able to visit together like this, so many miles away. Oh, yes. But this is what we call my gallery or what Kurt Piscara calls Candyland. Candyland. <laughs> so, this is where all the, not all of it, but I mean, when I want to see what looks good, what sounds good, what works, what doesn't work, we come in here and we put things together and you can see, it's an interesting place because you can taste test, so to speak, what Tasmanian timber sounds like. You can test what Stradivari spruce sounds like. You can listen to stainless steel. You can listen to oak. We have a new drum set that is kicked off by Russ Kunkel that is called the Contemporary Classic, which is a new shell for us. We just debuted some of this stuff at NAMM. Yes. So when you come in here, you can see why it's sometimes hard to get people to leave because it's a fun place to be. Okay, so now we've seen Candyland and it's gonna be hard to get these guys. Martin, we have to go. <laughs> he doesn't wanna go. No, no. I'm but, just gonna cry. And well, just, you know. those are happy tears, right? <laughs> so now we'll go over to visit our studio. How's that? Cool, right. great. Okay, so Absolutely. we'll pick it up over there. Okay, come on in. <laughs> Joe. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yes. Yes. This is where we're selling. We get one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Two, three. I know. This is a this is a great place where they 
They get to spread the word about DW and what we're doing. These are my friends from Poland. So, hi guys. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, so this is where we keep track of everybody's performance, what's going on. We also have customer service here. And uh, we utilize every square meter of our factory. <laughs> so, now we're going to take a look at the shipping area. When you receive things at your local store, it probably came from right here in a box, put it in a truck, and away we go. It's a studio that Don Lombardi has put together, and it's a, it was a great idea for the, uh, you know, putting this society of drummers to all together the best that he can. He's a, a big passion for that. Let me turn on some lights. Yesterday they had a big show in here. It's kind of like a little television studio. Yeah. And we can do so many things here. It's really put together nicely. And it's big enough to put an orchestra in, if you wish. And... Um, We've had a lot of people that rehearse here, do uh, DVDs here. I do some things here for, you know, uh, internet webinars, etc. I've worked here with JR, a lot of people, um, Thomas Lang, yeah. uh, Neil Peart would work in here too. So it's a, kind of a cool place, plenty of lights, it has a good sound to it. And, and the um, control room is in here. It's a nice space. Uh, on the upper deck, we do the video uh, mixing, and they can call a cameraman's cues for in there. So it's a regular studio, and they mix all the audio down here. So if you see things on the drum channel, mm. this is where it's coming from. And. Uh, this was a dream of Don Lombardi's. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important to have enough room to do things and to do it right so things look good and sound good. And then we'll just walk in there and that'll probably be a close to the end of our journey. But I do want to say that that's all the marketing, selling, and things that a lot of the advertisements that you see in magazines come from the creative people in these spaces. So at this point, I'm just going to say it's been a delightful time together, and I hope you enjoyed our journey. And I look forward to the next time that we meet, maybe in Poland. So for Beat It and from DW, I'm John Good, and I'm going to say thanks a lot for coming. Bye bye.